One thing you are really good at in this dimension is coming up with creative ways of killing each other. You have little ways and big ways and everything in between. But nuclear weapons are the best way. Very efficient and with a two-pronged approach. You kill hundreds of thousands immediately with a blast and then many more later with radiation, poisoning and related diseases. You've got nine countries with nukes, a global stockpile of 13,000 weapons and other countries constantly trying to join the club. I'm so proud of you. But 13, not a lucky number. And sooner or later, someone's bound to get an itchy trigger finger again. In fact, that's how this happened. When I was crossing over into your dimension, someone at United States Missile Defense got confused and fired an interceptor missile at me. It bounced off my head and it hurt. The worst thing about it was I wasn't expecting to face off against a nuclear missile. No one told me about it. I was completely unprepared. It was not a fair fight. So you think you're so bad, missile defense? Well, let's see what you got when I know you're coming for me. When I'm ready for you, okay? I demand a rematch for what you did to me. For what you did to me. For what you did to me. Dr. Torper here from the beyond. A dimension much more wondrous and compelling than your own. I spent 2.7 eternities exploring this realm. My exploration was complete, but then I found myself lethargic and lacking purpose. Thanks to a century of television waves emanating from a rather insignificant little planet, I realized there was more to be explored. Using my tricyclic powers, I attempted to enter this world, but was not yet able to, because there is more I needed to learn first. To accomplish my reconnaissance, I enlisted the aid of a mortal guide named Josh. Ha <laughs> ha! Together, this mortal and I explore your rich history through this strange cultural artifact you leave behind. I am told are called public domain films. Sounds like a lot of bad behavior on display. Should I take notes? No, this is not a test. This is Coulter. Give me a time check, please. 401-10, Dan. 401-11, 401-12, 401-13. Okay, I got it. 10 4 -0. Card 2, code 1305. Proceed to point 7 at once. Roadblock. 10 4 -0. Emergency code 1305. Established roadblock code 1305.
Pull over to the side of the road and turn out your lights. What's wrong, deputy? Just pull over to the side of the road. How long are we going to be held up? Pull it over. I wonder what's wrong, Gramps. Well, probably something up ahead. I hope he doesn't hold us up too long. If you leave that crazy car in the middle of the road, you're going to get it banged up. You're driving too fast, aren't you, lady? Wake up, Joe. I think our luck's run out. I'm not sleeping, baby. I'm just too much of a coward to keep my eyes open when you're driving. Dig? You know, you're going to lose your license. Lady, just pull your car over there and turn out your lights. And both of you stay in it. Hey, you! Get the flares out of my car and light them. They're in the back of the front seat. Put one over there. And one down there. To turn off my lights. Can we go now, Grant? No, not yet, honey. I don't know what's on his mind, but he told us to wait here, so there's nothing to do but wait. Some kind of roadblock? I don't know. The deputy stopped us. Told me to put these flares out. Pull your truck behind the pickup. Hear me? Move your truck behind the pickup. Better do like the man says. Okay. Never fail. I got a date with a beautiful redhead in Sacramento and I get held up on a road by some Mickey Mouse cop. No wonder I'm having trouble getting married. I'm out of grade here. I Better put some blocks underneath the wheels. Well, give me a hand, will you? You were across the middle of the road and coming around the turn. I was only going 65 miles an hour. That's the speed limit. Lady, the law reads 65 miles an hour within the limits of safety. You are overdriving. But it's four in the morning. You are overdriving. These oh. curves are dangerous day or night. Forget it. Don't argue. Now, what'd you do with my cigarette? What's the trouble here, huh? This is a roadblock. No cars are to proceed beyond this point in either direction. How long, Pops? Until I'm instructed to remove the roadblock. Well, now, isn't that considerate? Look, baby, don't let it bug you now. It isn't going to last forever. Look, I like it here. Well, then we got it made. Oh, look, you got it made. You won the money, and I won this kooky traffic ticket. You know, this one's going to cost me my license. Look, baby, how often do you get a chance to make a killing like this? $175,000. I don't let this badge happy cat bug you. I'll buy your ticket back. 
difficult even buy his badge. I, uh, uh, put those flares where you said. All units. Confirming 1305. It's a button-up. It's a button-up. Confirming 1305. Coulter at point seven. I read you. A 13.05. Repeat. A 13.05. 10.40. I think someone's coming now, Sam. Can you make out who it is? It's a police officer. Guess there's been some kind of accident. Officer, is there an accident? Is that what the flares are for? Pull your car behind that convertible, please. Yes, sir. Any idea how long we'll be delayed? Nope. Just pull your car over there. I hope it's not too long. Pull your car over there. Turn out your light and come up and join the group. Sure. All right, group around here. I want to talk to you. I'm Dan Coulter, Deputy Sheriff in Del Oro County. I know it seems strange if you stopped here at 4 o'clock in the morning, but the explanation's coming. First, let's have your name. <clears throat> my name's Sam Barnes. Uh, this is my wife, Karen. We're from Tahoe City. This is Timmy. Hiya, Timmy. Meet Cheryl Hudson from San Francisco. Joe Baraji, North Beach. Crazy. The name's Al Weston. Look, I got an important date tonight. How about you, Dad? Jacob Elliott Saunders. Lived around here all my life. Everybody just calls me Jake. I wish he'd tell us what this is all about. I'm anxious to leave. If we missed that plane after all the trouble we had getting reservations. All right, folks, there's one thing more. It may become necessary for me to... Just a minute, Jake. Well, I'm going over to the truck to get my granddaughter. I don't think she ought to be over there alone. All right, is there anybody else in these cars? I got a kid in the cab of my truck, some hitchhiker I picked up in Reno. Why didn't he get out of the truck? Beats me. We aren't going to be able to leave here for a while, honey. Perhaps there's something wrong, isn't there? Well, he hasn't told us yet. He hasn't told you anything? Well, everything's going to be all right. Has he told you anything? Now, June, honey, everything's going to be all right. I promise you. Gramps, are you ever going to stop treating me like a child? Oh, I don't mean nothing. Sometimes I think of you that way. I raised you, raised your mother. Maybe I don't want you to grow up. Oh, Gramps, I do love you. Hey, you're in the cab. Come on down out of there. The lady! Yeah, Junie, you all right? For a minute, I no, thought no, he was... No, no, I'm all right, Gramps. I'm all right. He's a maniac. See the way he attacked me? You're lucky he didn't use that knife on you. So that's what the roadblock was for, stakeout. Why didn't he tell us? Well, maybe he thought you were the one he was looking for. No. He knew the boy by name. You okay? Yes, he never came near me, but you sure had a close call. You never can tell what you're going to run into at 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm worried about Timmy. Timmy? Yes. Oh, you mean your dog. Yes, he went right in after that fella. A regular bloodhound. Oh, here he comes now. Well, I guess that's that. Come on, Karen, we can go. Yeah, I guess you can. Coming, Sam. Have a nice trip. Thank you, and you be careful who you pick up next time. Where are you going? Well, I'm just going to go out Come on back here. 
What for? I'm hip. The roadblock was set up for the kid, and you goofed it. So now you're running around playing Wyatt Earp. That's cool, man. But we don't have to play, too. Who was that guy? Clint Delaney. Nice kid. Six months ago, he killed a young girl. I remember reading about that. He stabbed that Ramsey girl to death. I'm sure he's responsible for a couple other killings, too. He's so frightened. His old man's dying of cancer in a county hospital. Show you how sick he is. Know what he did? He writes his old man a letter and tells him not to die till he gets there. Says he wants to watch him suffer. Wow, that guy was riding next to me with that knife for the last two hours. All units, all units. Situation 1310. Situation 1310. This is not a test. Condition yellow, air raid, air raid, extreme emergency. All officers take charge, Operation Eager. 1310, yellow alert. This is not a test. All right, we're in a state of emergency. This is a yellow alert, an air raid warning. We're being attacked. We can't say. I tell you, we're being attacked. How do you know the men didn't say anything about being attacked? Don't you understand what a yellow alert is? Well, what is it? It means we're in a state of emergency. But still don't I tell you, we're it. under attack. We've got to get to the nearest shelter. There must be one in the city. Come on, Joe, let's get out of here. Nobody's going anywhere. That's why I stopped you. Look, man, can't you get on that thing and ask them what's going on? They'll tell us as soon as they know. Well, what about Conrad? Maybe they know what's going on. Matter, can't you find Wait it? Wait a minute, what are you doing? Oh, it's right over here near 640. Crazy, it's fucked up. No, it isn't. It's working, baby. I just can't get Conrad with all this grabbing interference. You're wasting your time. There's no regular radio reception in these mountains. There's too many minerals here. Well, how are we going to know what's happening? They're liable to be attacking any minute. Get out of those cars! I said, get out of those cars and bring your keys. Now! Your radios are no good on this ridge. Only contact is a receiver in my car. All units. All units. Situation 1310, condition red, evacuation, evacuation, operation scatter. This is not a test. 1310, situation red, all highways out of population centers to be cleared for evacuation, operation scatter. All officers have full authority to deal with local problems. Did you hear that? They're evacuating the city. That's right. That's why I stopped you. And you're going to stay here. Every road from every population center is going to be jammed with thousands of automobiles, cars, trucks, buses. Every road jammed. Wow, baby. Do you realize if we'd have kept going, we'd have ran smack into that grabbing mess? And to stop you from adding to the congestion, my orders are to keep you here. I can just see what's going on down there. God help the Sunday drivers. Imagine the panic, all of them trying to run. What if someone stalls? As soon as somebody stalls, about 15 cats are going to get out of their cars and they're just going to push them right off the road, man. But in the meantime, the roads will be backed up for miles. This means we're not going to get to Mexico City. This is on a level. won't be very long before there'll be things flying around a little bit more important than a plane to Mexico City. I just can't believe it. Well, you better believe it. How about that? I could have been driving along the highway and... Bam, the end of the world. Well, at least I've got some company here. The end of the world? Could be. It doesn't seem possible. That's because people have been talking about it for so long. What are we going to do? I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to take it easy and proceed according to plans. Plans? You got it all worked out, Pop? It's all worked out. You got it worked out for a situation like this? Eight people on a mountain road? That's right. What do you got in the back of your heap, man? A collapsible bomb shelter? Attention all control points. All military, all civil defense units. Operation scatter must not slow down. Traffic stoppages on River Freeway must be cleared. Execute severest measures to control hysteria and keep traffic flowing. Martial law. Emphasize martial law. Sheep Sam, traffic. I want to go home. I don't want to stay yes, here. Yes, let's get in the car. Just the radio. Every road is jammed. Where are you going to go? I don't know, but I'm going to go someplace. Crazy, man. You know, I bet the cats are still rolling dice up the state line. 
How can you talk like that? We're being attacked. The whole country could be destroyed in the next few hours, and all you can do is talk about dice. This thing is on the level. What do you want me to do? Go out and fight the war myself? Is all that right, what... that's enough! I'm warning all of you. If I have to use force to keep order here, I will. You're not helping matters any by arguing. Isn't the Dalton grade up ahead? That's right, it's just up the road. We're 35 miles from the city. And 25 miles that way is Western Air Defense Command Headquarters. And 15 that way is Ramco. Ramco? A missile fuel refinery. But we're in a prime target area. One bomb would... You know what I think? I think you and you and you and me are sitting ducks on ground zero. Do you mean we're sitting on a target? Right smack in the full zone. Dr. Torper says that is not an approved way to get in contact with the infinite. Rather permanent. Well, let's get out of here. What are you keeping us for if this is ground zero? Where are you going to go? We're safer here than we would be in a city. Lucky I stopped you. Any idea what it's like back there? People get pretty panicky. I bet they're scratching and fighting their way out. There's a plan to control it. For a man, you talk pretty loud. Joe, where'd I put that fifth? Wait a minute. There ain't no drinking here. I can't find it, Joe. Get out of that car. Here it is. Okay. Just stay in the car a minute, baby. Now, if I remember correctly, there's a bar right back down the road. You're not going anyplace. What's the matter? Can't you hear? I said you're not going anywhere. Look, man, if the world's coming to an end and me and my chick want ended standing in front of a bar, that's none of your business. before and I mean it. I'll use force to keep order. You ought to take it easy. Who knows how much time we have left. Seems a shame to waste it getting mad at each other. Wait a minute. Did you have to hit him? Look, maybe it's my fault for mentioning Ground Zero. I was just talking because I ain't no general. That's pretty logical thinking. We all know that first action will be to knock out the country's ability to resist. First thing will be a white light that'll blind us. Then a hot flame that'll burn out. Take it easy. But that's not all. Even the air you breathe will be deadly. Everything you touch will give off radiation. Ever hear of Hiroshima? And you won't hear it. It'll happen suddenly. There'll be no warning. There'll be some chance, Gramps. Some of us will make it. We'll make it. Oh, man, that's a laugh. We'll make it just because you say so, huh? What are you going to do, Pops? Dig eight foxholes over in the side of that mountain? Do you realize the radius, the area of destruction from the explosion of one hydrogen bomb? It's too late to run. People survived Hiroshima. We can survive this. We can't do it with you yelling your head off. What do you want us to do? Now you're thinking. What do you want us to do, Colton? Empty that truck. What? You heard me. All of you. Empty that truck. We get inside, it might protect us. Gramps, I don't want to be locked up inside of that truck. Do you realize how long we'll have to stay inside? It's gonna be about two weeks. That's right, the radiation will be deadly. Do you really think we could stand a blast in the truck? Someone call Guinness. They're about to set a record for the world's largest toaster oven. You got a better idea? Yeah, let's get the hell out of here. There's no place to go. Now let's get over there and get that truck unloaded. You better go with him, honey. Well, what about you? I'm just going to stay here and watch you cats work. But Joe... Go ahead, or he's going to have us both handcuffed. No, no, go ahead, honey. What's the matter? Well, what am I going to do with the stuff inside? It's worth a lot of money. So what? I don't want to go in that truck, Gramps. Junie, I'll be there with you. You won't be alone. Do we have to go in that truck? 
We have to do what the man says. I can't stand the thought of being all locked up. Junie, we got to learn to accept things as they come. Right now, our only chance of surviving is to do what the man says. I won't be able to stand it, Grant. Junie! I'm not going to go in there. <laughs> Taking a stupid walk for my stupid mental health. I need my suitcase. I can't leave without my suitcase. Scared? Maybe. A little. Well, don't try to run away. I want to talk to you. Your face is all scratched. Does it hurt? No, it doesn't hurt. Where's my suitcase? Do you know what's happening? We're being attacked. It's a yellow alert. We're going to be bombed. You had my suitcase. Why didn't you bring it? Don't you understand? We're all going to die. No, they will. But you won't. You were nice to me. Junie! Is your name June? Are you up there? Don't let him come up here. He's not after you. None of them were ever nice to me. You were nice to me. June! Come on down! What do you want me to do? June! Judy! Let me talk to him. Don't let him come up here. I'm coming down, Gramps. Next time, bring my suitcase. Emergency. Let's just go to her over there and give us a hand. An emergency what? We're in a yellow alert. Subject to attack at any minute. What do you mean? Never mind the talk. Give me your keys. Now get over there and help unload that truck. We're going to use it as a bomb shelter. Say, Junior just ran into that Clint. Where'd he go? He ran away. I don't want any of you people wandering off. Get this truck unloaded. Who's attacking us? I don't know, but the warning's been coming over his radio. That means nuclear warfare. Are they sure it's coming here? Yes, they're sure. They're evacuating the city. Oh, God. Automobiles can't move us fast enough to get us out of the area of destruction. There's no place to run. No place. That truck is supposed to protect us from the blast? Well, he thinks so.
You want to cooperate? Like this? Either you cooperate and we work together, or you're going to sit where you are. Joe, don't fight with him. Honey, I don't want to be alone. Do what he says. Well, how's it going to be? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. How you doing, honey? They're unloading the truck. Just full of goodies. You know, there's a cookie mink cut over there like the one I always wanted. Oh, yeah? Hey! Don't unload that stuff near the wheels. We're gonna have to move the truck. Put them over there. There it is. See, Joe? Wasn't I right? Oh, be careful. Look what you did. Who's going to take inventory? Well, you've got a lot of valuable merchandise in this truck. Sam, please don't just stand there. Who do you think you're talking to? I'm talking to you, and don't glare at me. That's enough. No, it isn't. Shut up! Why don't you pitch in? You'd be surprised how much better you felt if you were busy. Honey, this is a real pirate's den. There's all kinds of loot. There are a couple of more coats in here. Latch on to one. You too, Pollyanna. Hey, man, you got something to open this with? It's Christmas at Macy's. Hey, man, you got something to open this with? Use your hand. I bought a mink coat for you. Are you sure to fit? Like a glove. A little incongruous, isn't it? A symbol of the joyous celebration of the savior of man. I was looking forward to such a happy Christmas this year. You know that one of these big missiles launched from any place on Earth can strike a target with pinpoint accuracy in just 75 minutes? We got the first warning 20 minutes ago. God rest ye merry, gentlemen. Money means nothing when you're really interested. But we've only met Mr. Weston. Call me Al. All right, Al. What do you want? Uh, a diamond tiara. Okay, here's a diamond tiara for you, princess. What else do you want? How about some caviar? Sure, there's a case around here somewhere. Caviar. Here we go. Imported, the real thing. That's only the beginning, Karen. Nylons for every hour of the day. Al, oh, they're size 14. What's the difference? Well, what'll I do with all these things? Put them out on the patio by the swimming pool. <laughs> anything you want, it's yours from Al. And no strings attached. I'll give you anything but a tomorrow. There isn't going to be a tomorrow, is there? I don't know. I, I kind of like to think there is. It's, it's too bad we can't cram everything we'd like to do into this truck. Yeah. We got food and we got water and... Yes. That is a compliment. Well, I mean it. This truck ought to be pretty interesting for the next 14 days. Yes. You too hungry? There's some food over here. Uh, Pete, how about giving me a hand? Hundred-proof bourbon. Not bad. Seems you ought to have a drink. Joe! 
Joe, you're a regular St. Bernard. Well, don't just stand there. Rescue little old Cheryl. Well, I'm coming, baby. Well, alcohol <laughs> kills all germs. So just like that, you have 100 proof sake, ma'am. Rock the rock. I'm scared, Joe. I'm scared. How about that, Jazz? 175,000 bucks. Isn't that frost you? For the first time, we got independence. No more scamming and hustling, Dick. This is it, baby. A free ride to any place we want to go. Joe, what's going to happen? Nothing's going to happen. I don't want to die. You're not going to die. We're going to get out of this. No, we're not. Didn't I tell you I had a cool feeling? Everything was going to be groovy when I started the game. Well, everything's worked out up till now, hasn't it? This is different, Joe. No, it's not. The odds are longer, yeah. But this is a pretty big patch of ground. And I got a good feeling everything's going to be all right. I want to believe you. You got to believe me, baby. I do, Joe. I do. I do. I do. What are you doing now, man? I said there'd be no drinking here, and I meant it. We're not going to have any drunks around here. Now, let's get that truck unloaded. We haven't got all night. What's the matter with you? We found some things in the truck that might be useful. Come over here and take a look. Yeah. Anything else? Yes, there's some cases of food. Yeah. We got enough water? I got a full water bag on the front of my pickup truck. I got 20 gallons in a tank and back of the cab. Two cases of canned grapefruit juice over there. Get awful thirsty in 14 days, we'll have to ration it. You can get thirsty in 14 minutes if you're scared enough. What's happening, Pop? We don't want to be litter bug. You're kidding. Oh, we want to keep it clean for the... The one you've been waiting for. The rematch between the ground-based interceptor ballistic missile and Dr. Torfer. See the explosive action on pay-per-view in the comfort of your own stratosphere. ICBM versus Torfer 2. Shotgun? Yeah. Take this and get up there high enough so you can get a good view all around this area. That's the only way we're going to be able to finish here. Okay. If you see him, shoot him. All fire units. All fire units. All. Hey, Coulter! There's 
Something coming over on your radio. Units 19, 20, 35, 126, and 163 to rail marshalling yard. All fire units, all fire units. Officers, shoot all looters, shoot all looters. What's going on? Can't make it all out. There's a fire and there's looting. All units. If they were to hit the city from here, could we hear it? Could we see it? Take it easy. Oh, it won't happen. I don't believe it. Junie, where did I put the book? Behind the seat on your side. Can I get it for you, Grant? No, I'll get it myself. Is it pronounced nuclear or new killer? No. Nuclear. Sovereign nations. Tired of other countries messing around on your borders? Bad trade deals? High tariffs? With nuclear, rid yourself of international conflicts permanently! Nuclear! It's good foreign policy. Joe, I want to thank you for your present. It's just what I wanted. Oh, wow, baby. That stuff really hits you, doesn't it? No, I feel fine. You know, I'm not worried anymore. Not even a little bit. And I don't want you to worry either. You got another bottle, baby. Now, I know you didn't get that stoned on what you had in there. <laughs> Give me that. No, you don't. You heard what the no, cops said. No, you're not going to find out. You two have a drinking problem. She's still drinking. Well, why shouldn't she if it makes it any easier? He said there was to be no more drinking. She's not hurting anybody. She's jeopardizing every one of us. We're going to be penned up in this truck for two weeks. And I don't like the idea of spending 14 days with an alcoholic woman. Have you figured out where you're going to move the truck? Yeah. Well, just between you and me, do you think it's going to do any good? What do you mean? You know if we're within 200 miles of ground zero, it's no use. People survived Hiroshima and they didn't have any warning. Well, that was an old-fashioned atomic bomb. Now, if they use the hydrogen warhead, then what? In that case, it's over. No truck, no mountain, no nothing. Well, we can't think that way. As long as I wear this badge, it's my duty to protect the lives of the citizens. And your plan of survival is a truck? That's right. Sure, I could have sent you to a reception area. When? Why didn't you? We'd have never made it. Honey? Come here. Have a drink? Come on, it's great. Whiskey? Clair and mellow. What's the matter, kid? I'm frightened. Well, who isn't? I'll tell you something, honey. I've been scared since I was 12. know this would happen when he bought me a mink coat. I'm sorry. You know, Joe, he looks like a hood. He acts like a hood most of the time. But I know him. He's a sweet guy. He's been awful good to me. I love him. You want to know something? He loves me, too. Come on, honey. Bottoms up. <coughs> That's a girl. It may not be the best tasting stuff, but it'll sure make you feel better. Are you going to get married? Joe went on it first class. A wedding in a big church and all the relatives. 
honeymoon on the mat, Sonia. The Royal Hawaiian Bridal Suite. He just never had enough to make it till now. And now that he's finally got it. <laughs> You talk pretty weepy for a girl. Here's to love. It's the greatest. I almost blew your head off. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have given you some warning. You're lucky I'm not trigger happy. The truck loaded and ready to move? I don't know, Al. Hey, you, you look nice and mink. Peaceful up here. Sure. That's why I got the shotgun. Al, would you really shoot him? If I had to. Poor boy, you must be frightened to death. You know what you're doing? I think I do. You, James, you're all alike. Where have you been? Where's your wife? I don't know. That's where I was looking for her. Did you find her? No. No. See the kid, Clint? No, I didn't see anything. Well, where's your wife? I suppose she'll be back in a minute. Well, let out a holler. That'll bring her in.
Uh, that does it. We got everything in the truck. Okay. We're going to move the truck about a quarter of a mile up the road. Some of you can ride in the back of the truck. The rest of you can ride with me. I'll bring my car so I can keep in contact with County. All right, let's go. Go get the driver. What are you waiting for? He's got to drive the truck. It's going. I said you appreciated honesty. I don't want you to become angry. Well, it's important for me to know how you feel. Does it really make any difference? Does it? Yes. It would tomorrow. Okay, for for your tomorrow. Like I said before, any guy worth his salt is going to appreciate you for what you are. And I dig you. Oh, Al. loaded. We're going to move. You better come down. It really doesn't make any difference, does it? No, it doesn't. Back of the truck. You can ride with me. Let's go. You two come with me. Open up. You've got a passenger.
That is truly horrible. I think Norman Bates was throwing real chickens around. That's animal abuse. It's right up there with Cannibal Holocaust. At least he didn't bite the head off of one like Ozzy Osbourne. You know, for you creeps involved in uh, filming that scene, if any of you are still alive, Dr. Torper condemns you to the outer limits where you can't even have control over your own television set because there's actually some things more important than making a movie and being nice to animals is one of them. Repeat, 1320. Missiles. Missiles. Condition red. Condition red. Missiles. Missiles. Where's the water bag? Protect and it's in the truck. Get it! Protect and assist. Pour it out here. Pour the water out. Give me the bag! Are you out of your nut? We need mud to put on the screens and the air vents. It'll act as a filter. Help me! Oh, man, ain't we got a wild idea. Big Daddy and Mud Pie. Grab a handful! What are we gonna do? If we're on ground zero, everything for miles around will be burnt beyond recognition. Well, I've known that all along. It would make more sense asking forgiveness on the ridge than going through all these survival motions. Then why stay? Because Mr. Laws ordered us to. Well, we'll see about that. Attention, attention. All medical personnel proceed to shelter immediately. Missile, missile, missile. Time of arrival, approximately five. Seattle. Get in the truck! This is Coulter. Do you read me? Do you hear me? I'm not going to go in there. Well, I won't ask you to. I'm not going either. Then let's go. We'll be in a truck, and this car will be out of operation. 10-4-0. Right, Dan, 10-4-0. They went away. Come in Seattle. Seattle. Come on, get in there! Dear God. What am I gonna do? I got the rest a little. Where are we going? I heard a gun go off, Grant. Oh, yeah. Never mind about that. It would have been less complicated at Rock Creek. Oh, you? You live at Rock Creek? Right on the Crusher Trail. Oh, yes. At, at Crandall Shack. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I remember a spring above here. I could use a drink. No, I'll wait here. Seattle, come in. Come in, Seattle. Seattle, come in. WRLRP calling WMQQR San Francisco. Come in, Tom. Do you read me? Bunch of sober people, you're a pretty sober group.
how much time we got. This truck was going to end up as a bomb shelter. I'm hot. Well, aren't you hot, Joe? Is it really going to be like that? Heat and the blast and the radiation. Yeah. Now, how the hell should I know? But, Joe. Shut up. Will you please, honey? Peter, I did a lot of thinking while you two were away. You know, about a hundred yards from that old shack of yours up in the hills is an abandoned mine. I've never seen it. Oh, it's there. Very old mine. With a lot of shrubbery around the entrance. Used to play there when I was a kid. It goes deep into the side of the mountain. Now, by following the main tunnel, you'll be able to go far enough back in where you'll find an area that should protect you. And you don't have to worry about water because there's an underground spring. You really think we'll have a chance there? You'll be a lot safer there than you will be in that truck. Of course, I don't know what you're going to do about food. There's some canned food at the cabin. We can take some with us. Good, good. Well, then, if you hurry, you can make it. Well, what about the others? Oh, once they lock that door, they'll never open it again. Colter can only see things his way. He actually believes that they've got a chance in there. Well, let's try to get them to go with us. There's no use. If anybody has a chance, it'll be young folks like you. Now, that's kind of one-way thinking. Now, do as I tell you. You're going to be in the same boat that they're in. Now, get moving. Well, come on, Grant. Right. Always be prepared. It's my motto, too. Now, you two, get in the pickup truck. Oh. I, I got something else to do. No, I'm not going to Now, Junie, I'm not coming with you. I'm going to the top of that mountain. I'm going to climb up there and watch it happen. I don't particularly want to be around when this thing's over with. But you two have got to believe that there can be a new beginning. You haven't much time. Save it till later. You can't smoke in here. I said I'd save it till after. With all this mud packed on the ventilators, we ain't gonna get any air in here. Well, that's the whole idea. The air's gonna be full of radiation. We want to keep as much of it out of here as possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. Look, I don't know about you, but this heat's too much. I'm sure nobody cares if I make myself more comfortable. Well, look, for the next two weeks, we're going to be awful close. I'm sure nobody cares. doors just a little bit. Get some fresh air. Are you out of your nut? Who knows when this thing is going to go off? We wouldn't have time to shut the doors.
Give me that dog. What do you mean? I mean, give me that dog. What are you going to do with him? You can't open the doors to let him out. The bomb's life will go off. That dog's got to go. We're going to need every bit of air to breathe ourselves. After a while, we'll be laying on the floor to get fresh air. But he's just a little dog. He doesn't breathe. We can't have him here. No. Dog's got to go. Don't you touch him. Wait a minute. First we had chicken mangling, and now we have dog abuse. I can't look. I think I'm going to be sick. <laughs> Won't do you any good to cry. It's all over. A little while you'll be thanking me. Get rid of that dog and help it off a lot. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> You'll be glad we don't have that extra pair of lungs when you're laying here gasping for breath. Take it easy, Karen. Shut up. No more talking. Best thing for everybody to do now is just sit down and take it easy. The more you get yourselves worked up, the hotter it's going to get and the harder it's going to be. to the group. Didn't know there was anybody in the truck till we heard all the ruckus. What do you got in there? <laughs> all kinds of goodies. Where'd you come from? We're the first out. From the city? There ain't no city no more. Everybody there's going nuts. Yeah, the whole warehouse district's on fire. The bomb? Are you kidding? <laughs> what happened to the law? How come you cats got through? There ain't no law. It's everybody for himself. We are the law as far as we're concerned. Well, I'm the law here. Well, you just go right ahead and be the law. All we want to do is get out of here. Nobody's stopping you. Get going. We need gasoline. Is there any gas in there? No. Look, all we need is about 10 gallons to get on the other side of the mountains. Take a look. It's the truth. We ain't got any. Where do you think you're going to go? As far away from here as we can get. You ain't got a chance, man. That blast is going to cover an area for miles around, and you ain't going to run fast enough or far enough to get anywhere. Why don't you get in the truck with us? Are you kidding? That flimsy thing will never hold. Even if the blast doesn't cave it in, the heat will burn it to a crisp. You're wrong. Look, man, if we thought we had a chance, we would have fought our way into the subway. There ain't no chance here at all. But we got a chance if we get some gas. All units, all units take shelter. Take shelter. Missiles coming in. Missiles three minutes away. Missiles three minutes away. No, we got no time to mess around. Oh, let's get the hell out of here. There ain't no gas in the bus. Let's try the cop's car. Five seconds away. Missiles, minutes, 50 seconds. Go, oh, keys! Take shelter. Take shelter. Get him! 
no use you staying here. Come on, move. Let's go. Since this movie is over, so is your pain. You just watched This Is Not A Test. Uh, and I stayed up all night studying for it. 
We had the rematch. I didn't win, but I didn't lose either. It was a disqualification. I was caught trying to interfere with the nuke getting launched. Disarmament treaty, economic sanctions, the whole deal. I thought for sure I got that missile grounded. So it snuck up on me again. I hate to disappoint you, but there will not be an ICBM versus Torpor 3. I also failed the drug test. Not for taking drugs. For trying to slip some into the missile. Downers. Dr. Torpor saying, with nuclear weapons, there are no winners. So find another way to get in contact with the infinite... Oh.